Chapter 38 The staircase turns in a wide spiral. Each time we go round a corner, we're expecting to come face to face with a scarecrow. But no one is there. We don't stop to think about what's happened to Crokey's guards. We just take our chance and run as fast as we can. The walls are splattered with crusty white goo, feathers and dirty straw. The muck spreads under our feet, muffling our footsteps. We climb higher. The air gets colder. Soon I can see puffs of mist each time I breathe out. At the top of the staircase we burst out into a round, dimly lit chamber, with passageways leading in all directions. It's vast like a cathedral, and it's filthy and smells unmistakably of bird. Rose looks dismayed. dismayed. Which way do we go? We need a map! Her voice echoes around us. A map? I feel in my back pocket. We've got one! That can't help us, says Rose. We've never been here, so we won't have put those tunnels on the map. But I'm already unfolding it, remembering something odd that I saw in Grandad's attic. I hold the map up to the light of a torch. There! I point at the picture of the crow's nest. Just below it is a series of squiggly lines. My eyes flicked over it in the attic, but now I see it see that these aren't random scribbles at all. They show the tunnels we're standing in. I don't believe it, whispers Rose. Mitch must have told us about this. She's the only one who came in here. With her finger, she traces the narrow entrance of the sea cave to a tiny set of stairs. We're here. She points at a spot where six passageways lead off in different directions. And look, I found a circular chamber with Dungan written over it, above it. I trace backwards from the dungeon to the point on the map where we are standing, like I'm doing a maze in a puzzle book. It's this one. Rose nods towards the opening directly in front of us. I stuff the map back in my pocket, secretly thanking Mitch wherever she is, and we run into a wide passageway. Like the stairs, it curves round and round and seems to rise upwards. The walls are coated in the same feathery muck, and every now and then my feet slip into something. But we keep going until we turn a corner and enormous pale moths with milky eyes flit around our heads. Seriously creepy, whispers Rose. I nod, batting the moths away. I can't shake the feeling that something about this feels wrong. And it's not just the giant moths. It's too quiet down here. Would Crokey really leave his dungeon unguarded? The silence makes me jumpy, and I start to see movements in the shadows. And imagine scarecrows creeping up behind us, or worse, croaky. Come on, says Rose, pulling me on. The passageway straightens out into a gloomy tunnel with thick wooden doors set into the walls. Each door has a rusting lock and sliding hatch. They look like cells and, sh and strange sounds drift from behind some of them. Flutters and stamps and scratches. Rose and I look at each other. Grandad could be behind any of these doors. Trying to make as little noise as possible, I slide back the hatch on the first door and peer inside. Cool air brushes against my face, and in the gloom I see cages lining the walls. At first I think they're empty, but then shapes creep forward and eyes blink back at me. Two wings emerge from a cage and curl round the bars like fingers. I've never seen creatures like this in Raw. They're like crows, but far bigger. There are cages, I whisper to Rose. Lots of them, with birds inside. At least, I think they're birds. I step back so she can see. She shakes her head. Whatever they are, they shouldn't be locked up in this disgusting place. We have to let them go. She goes to try the door handle, but I pull her back. No, we don't know what they'll do. We can't do anything that might stop us from finding Grandad. 
Reluctantly, Rose nods and we continue down the passageway, peering into each chamber as we go. We don't find Grandad, but we see a lot of unsettling things. A workshop with a collection of half-made scarecrows propped against the walls and sack heads arranged on a shelf. A laboratory with potions bubbling in flasks. There's even a room filled with dusty-looking creatures. A mermaid with peeling scales. A unicorn resting against the wall. A whole line of tiny furries. I think these are all things that got stuffed and stayed stuffed, I say, when we check carefully to make sure Grandad isn't propped up in there with them. It all feels horribly unfamiliar. Until now, no matter how strange everything has been in Raw, Rose or I have had a connection to it. Even Crokey is made up of things I hate. But these cells have nothing to do with us. We're in Crokey's world now. The last cell is different. It contains nothing but cardboard boxes. I know these boxes are important, but I can't remember why. Just the sight of them sends a shiver slipping down my spine. I slam the hutch shut. He's not in here, I say. Let's go. But Rose isn't listening. She's staring at something scratched into the wall of the tunnel. Pictures, she says, and in the dim light I see them too. A jumble of images and symbols scored over and over again on the wall. Rose seems hypnotised by them. Come on. I pull her away. We've wasted enough time here already. We run away from the cells down the passageway. It's even wider here and colder. A lone moth brushes against my face. Look, says Rose. Up ahead is a huge doorway. It rises to the ceiling and has a shape burnt into it. Two upturned wings that seem to form a smile. We rush forward and Rose has to use both hands to pull back the bolt. Then we push against the door. It won't budge. So we throw all of our weight against it again and again until it bursts open with a deafening squeal. And there, standing on a stone platform, his arms outstretched, his eyes staring into space and his ankles clamped in chains, is Grandad. <laughs>